Bird and welcome to another episode of Woo Bar. In today's episode, we are kicking out launch math with a new AWS Rainbend launch. In this case, Lambda Destinations. If you want to know more about serverless cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. So here I am in Vegas in my room and uh, drinking a nice cup of coffee, very jet lagged, so that's why the face, no makeup. <laughs> but as I promised, I'm going to make one video every day of this month for you. So I need to start with the right food, kicking off with the first of December video that is going to be Lambda destination. This launch was announced last week, so it's from the pre reinvent launches, but I think it's a pretty cool launch. So that's what I want to cover in this video. But before getting to that particular launch, do you know that Lambda already supports three new runtimes, Node 12, Java 11, and Python 3.8? So that's also from the pre uh, reinvent launches, so I'm pretty excited about it. So in this video, it's going to be about uh, destinations. I will show you a demo and some explanations on what is this in the slides. So let's go to the code and to the slides to get started. So you might know a common event-driven microservice architectural pattern is to use a queue or a message views for communication between lambdas, for example, or between different microservices or things like that. This is done to keep the different parts decoupled. And this helps with resiliency and scalability and maintainability of the whole service. So if we want to invoke one Lambda from another, in traditional way what we do is create queues in between them and create a long set of Lambda queues, Lambda queues. Or you can use event bridge or something else, but usually we add something in the middle. So what we end up doing is writing all the logic of where the messages should go inside the business logic of the Lambda. So we will write something like this if uh, this is a Lambda that calls another Lambda with a queue. So if there is an error, it will go to a particular queue or the error message. And then if something is successful, it will read another message to maybe another queue. Uh, this is quite tedious as we are adding a lot of information into the business logic of this Lambda and in the future if we want to change this we need to come into the business logic and change the Lambda and redeploy the whole thing. And if you think about it these two Lambdas are not really that decoupled because one Lambda knows about the queue and needs to have all these things inside this business logic. Luckily now we have Lambda destinations. This is the launch I want to talk about. So the idea here is that uh, you can route asynchronous functions results to another destination resource without adding the code inside the business logic. So you need to write uh, the execution record that will have information about the where the information will go. So you will have to say, okay, on success it goes to this uh, resource and on failure it goes to this other resource. And in this way, you can handle the success and the failure in different ways. The four destinations available now are other Lambda functions, SNS, SQS, and a brand bridge. When a function is invoked successfully, then the Lambda routes the record to the destination resource for that successful invocation. Destinations allow you to return a success response to call another function. And in that way, you can have a workflow of functions without having to put queues in the middle, just by using the destination configuration and calling all these functions asynchronously. For failures, you can use destinations to handle the failure and put this in another queue or resource. This can be done for further processing or for more investigation or for monitoring. Before destinations, we usually use the dead letter queues and this has been available from 2016. I have not made a video on that. It's something I had pending, but now they launched destinations and this is another way to handle the failure situations. If you already have uh, dead letter queues, then they will work side by side with destinations. And according to the AWS documentation, destinations are a more preferred solution. So what we are going to build 
we are going to create a lambda that doesn't have an event because we are going to trigger it from the from the console so this is an example and we are going to pass an event on success and on failure to call different lambdas depending on what is going on and for that we are going to use the destinations so now we will go to the code uh, the code is available in github so you can go and check it out i already downloaded it and try it out here so i can show you the code step by step in this example we have a function and the function uh, is using the node 12 so in order to use this project you need to update your sum cli to support the node 12 so you can deploy this this allows function basically if we go and open it in the handler it will just uh, grab the event and if the event has a success in the message it will just return a successful invocation and if it has a failure or something else it will throw a callback with an error so it will fail so it's a very simple piece of code and then we have two functions on success and on failure these functions are extremely simple they're just printing in the console something so nothing worth to to watch and you can see that these functions don't have any uh, event trigger but they will get triggered through the uh, destinations the next thing we have here is the event invoke config and these are the destinations configuration and this is what you need to add in order for getting your destinations to work add the function that will have the destination configured to and then you have to put the destination configuration for unsuccess and unfailure so here you need to define for each of these uh, cases the RNN of the resource it can be a lambda, not a lambda it can be an SQS, SNS or a RAN bridge and you just do that it's very simple and then when you deploy you will get the destinations configured so now we can try this I already deployed this project so we can see it in action so I wrote here my invocations for lambda so I invoke in the function name hello function so this 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 function and I just sending a success in the payload so now I will go to my lambda console and I will refresh this and wait to see the invocation coming here so this is our lambda application when you deploy these three functions will be grouped together so we will be able to see it in the console so now we have uh, invoked the the function we refresh the cloudwatch cons uh, console and we can see here that we have two invocations one for the hello function and the other one from the access function and we don't have any errors so here is uh, zero errors in this point of time and now we can invoke the error so I will trigger that and this should trigger the, the error path so we can refresh the this dashboard until we see the error happening so now I refresh for long enough time that we can see the total invocations are two again and we invoke the hello function and the hello function invoke the on failure function and if we go here to the errors we can see that we have one error in the hello function and that's it the code is available in github and this was the video for today i hope you like it if you did give a big thumbs up if you want to know more launches about aws stay tuned subscribe and leave any comments and things that you would like to see in future videos and launches that are interesting for you that you would like me to comment or create a demo for it so i see you tomorrow with another episode of uber ciao, ciao.